Are we live? Thank you. Good evening and welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals for Scarborough, the month of April 2014. Carol, could you take a roll, please? Mr. Crockett? Here. Mr. Dillon? Here. Mr. Loisel? Here. Mr. Massisso? Mr. Richard? Here. Mr. Stark? Here. Uh, this evening, since Mr. Marcis is not here, Mr. Richard will be voting this evening. And we have five, so we have a quorum. We have uh, three appeals this evening. We're going to start with appeal number 2414. Oh, excuse me. We, uh, we're going to have the Pledge of Allegiance first. Sorry, I'm still pretty green at this. So you're still coming up the learning curve. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, I'd like a motion or some discussion on the I'd like to vote. approve last month's meetings, uh, last <laughs> minutes. Thank you. I second that. <laughs> all those in favor? Unanimous? Rick Strong now. Now, we'll get into the first appeal, which is Appeal 2414. Uh, <coughs> Jeffrey and Jennifer Seaver, owners of the property on 7, Vesper Street, U1, Lot 94. And we have a variance appeal, and it's about the demolition and reconstruction of their rear structure to raise the structure half a foot from the south side property line and the basis for the appeal is that it's an R4 zone, it requires side property setback 15 feet and they're looking for 14 and a half. So if we can have a representative approach the podium and uh, explain the appeal to us, please state your name and, uh, uh, and what's your Absolutely. Name. Thank you, Russ. Uh, my name is uh, Russ Dyson. I'm with uh, Witten Architects in Portland. Uh, myself and Rob Witten, who is the principal of Witten Architects, are here uh, acting as agents for Jeffrey and Jennifer Seaver. Um, they have uh, sort of moved overseas, but are origi originally from um, the U.S. and uh, are there overseas now, regrettably sort of away, but uh, they are away. Um, in terms of the project itself, uh, we were approached by the Seavers uh, last summer, summer of 2013, and uh, they uh, showed us their property at 7 Vesper Street. It includes uh, two cottages on the property. If you uh, look at the drawing you see here in front of you, and I'll step away from the mic if that's okay. Yes. Turn it around. Um, there's a front cottage and back cottage. Uh, this drawing shows the back cottage moved six feet further away from the rear property line. So right now it's sitting where this dash line is right now. Just to sort of orient. Okay, thank you. <coughs> um, Jeffrey and uh, Jennifer sort of uh, requested of Witten Architects sort of an assessment of their existing home, um, both the front and back cottage. Uh, they noted that they wanted to make some in interior improvements to the front cottage um, along with some energy efficiency improvements and they really wanted sort of a protected entry into the house. Right now there isn't one at all. Uh, at the back cottage, which is an original 1920s construction uh, that is inconsistent with the standards that the front cottage has been brought up to. Uh, they wanted to sort of improve that and bring it up to the level of construction at the front cottage if possible. Uh, they also sort of question the stability of that structure. It has some significant structural fa failures that are happening at it. They also wanted a safe and comfortable living environment. Um, and they also wanted to address energy efficiency there. It's a 1920s cottage that has no insulation. Um, and for both heating and cooling, it's sort of very expensive. Uh, the other thing that the Jeffrey and Jennifer Seaver wanted, they wanted to maintain the sort of small cottage uh, beachfront, Higgins beachfront uh, character at that location. Uh, Jeffrey Seaver has been sort of vacationing here since he was a toddler, so Higgins Beach is important to him. 
um, in early August, after sort of reviewing some concepts with the Seavers, we approached Brian Longstaff and Tom Rainsborough with our conceptual plan for the site. Um, both Brian and Tom felt, and I'm gonna speak for Tom here a little bit, um, felt that the conceptual plan, including um, at the time what we suspected were some significant repairs to the back cottage, sort of met zoning requirements as defined by the zoning ordinance. Albeit, Brian and Tom suggested that we meet with the DP to review the fact that we were within a frontal dune or the, the property was designated to be in a frontal dune. Um, what we did then after that is met with our structural engineer about a week later to have him look at sort of the stability of the back structure and sort of determine you know, how much did we need to do to this to sort of bring it up to what um, Jeffrey and Jennifer wanted. Um, he felt that, uh, and this is the structural engineer, felt that the, the significant roof sag that we were seeing was caused by a structural failure at the roof ridge beam and very light framing that's been there for a long time. Um, the floor and foundation also was sagging and causing some failure there and it's causing also out of plumb walls both on the interior and the exterior. Um, in short, the structure does not meet sort of today's standards of construction. Um, the mounting repairs and improvements needed, um, including sort of energy, energy efficiency improvements that are needed, sort of begin to question in our mind, you know, how far is this project going? Is it getting, as you I'm sure are aware, as soon as you start to dig into something old, it sort of snowballs. Um, and that's sort of what we, we started to see happen here. Um, at that time, about a week later, we, um, and maybe three weeks later uh, than meeting with Tom and Brian, we met with Christine Woodruff at the DEP. We described to her what we planned to do at the back cottage. Our description of that, what we planned to do, kicked up um, from the DEP standpoint. Um, as soon as you try to repair a structure more than 50% of its assessed value, um, basically that means you need full DEP review and a coastal frontal dune. Um, and also requires you to lift the building up, um, in our case, two and a half feet. Um, that pushes you three feet above a sort of natural elevation of grade around you and allows the movement of sand and water underneath the structure at a frontal dune. Um, so again, we were sort of deemed by the DEP to have to basically reconstruct the structure because of the fact that they didn't deem it as a repair and maintenance item. Um, in January of 2014, uh, we had another meeting with Brian Longstaff. Uh, Brian noted to us, and after you know describing to him what the DEP was asking for, Brian noted to us that our lifting of the structure by two and a half feet um, requires zoning board approval. Um, and I, I want to sort of highlight that because that's not sort of in the agenda sort of description. And that was sort of what triggered, in our opinion, the reason for being here to begin with, um, is that raising of two and a half feet. Uh, we are also non-conforming right now with respect to the side yard setback that we share with the the McDonald property, which is this property right here. To the south. Um, we have been sort of cognizant of trying to make the project um, sort of agreeable to surround, surrounding abutters and neighbors. Um, so. Uh, the McDonald's are actually here this evening and actually have supplied a letter uh, in support of the project. I'm not sure if that's been handed to you or not. I have copies of it if you need it. Um, but it was sent to Brian a couple weeks ago. We have that one. Okay. Thank you. Um, continuing with that effort to be respectful of surrounding neighbors uh, with your approval and with the D's a P's approval, which will happen hopefully later this summer, the project has been submitted to the DP already and is under their review right now. But they have 120 days to review and we don't expect that we'll hear from them at least before June. 
um, but we may hear as late as July. With your approval and with the DE's of P's approval, we don't plan to start construction until fall of this year, after the summer season, and then also complete all the renovations and construction prior to summer of 2015. Um, again, respectful of surrounding properties. That is a, a as quick as possible overview of sort of the history of why we're here. I'm happy to walk through sort of the, the materials that you have in front of you, um, but at this time, I guess, without belaboring the point or taking too much of your time, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, if you can stay right at the podium for sure. right now. Uh, Mr. Rainsball, do you have any uh, comments on what you went through? Sorry. Yeah. Do I have any comments? Yeah, do you have any comments about the, the process? <coughs> no. Okay, good. Yep. We always open it up to the town, so. <coughs> okay. Um, I'm gonna open up the questions for the board. We're going to close the public portion of the hearing. We're going to go to the private portion of the meeting. Uh, any questions or comments from the board? Now, one thing I appreciate from the applicant is uh, the details that you gave us did answer a bunch of the questions that we would normally be asking. So I appreciate you going to that level of detail. It, uh, Definitely. It uh, expedites it for sure. Is, is this property used uh, as a rental as well or just for family use? Currently. Uh, in the winter time, the back cottage is rented out. It has two separate electrical meters, and has it is you know designated as two separate dwellings. They want to actually get rid of that essentially with this change, um, and that it'll become essentially one um, dwelling. And be on one meter at that point. I believe so. Yes. Okay. And you said the DEP is going to be <coughs> giving you the decision somewhere in June or July in that time frame, was that correct? Yes, we submitted the project uh, mid-month last month, okay. and they have 120 days, which puts us into July okay. uh, at the latest. So our approval would be contingent on that. Right. I, I think I'd like, to, um, I'd like to see for the public's use, even while we have copies of all that, uh, we need to get it on record exactly what your plans are there. If you would show us the, the sketches that you have, talk about that and the way that you're going to do the foundation. Sure. Um, especially the foundation, I think. Absolutely, definitely. And uh, we have several boards here. Um, you I'll, can start, I'll start with this one so the folks at home can use it. Definitely. I'll start, I'll start with this, uh, this board. Um, the front and back cottage are the two large squares here on the site. Um, again, we plan to be less non-conforming with regard to the rear setback because our reconstruction allows us to do that. So we are moving uh, 15 feet, or within the, or outside the 15 feet from the um, neighboring property to the, the side here. So the setback for. This property is sort of located right here, and you can see that on the dash line, hopefully in front. Yep. And we don't plan to move any closer to the waterfront, which is to your south here. Um, we just plan to move it directly closer to the front cottage. Uh, I noted to you one of the things that the Seavers want asked of us was a way to connect the front and back cottage. Um, so we are showing a deck that's totally conforming to the setback requirements. Um, connecting the two cottages. It's an uncovered or unroofed deck just connecting the two, just so they can walk at the same level from one cottage to the other. And there's no impervious ground disruption there? No impervious ground disruption there. Um, I will say this, um, from an impervious coverage standpoint, the DEP asks that there be no more than 200 square feet of deck on the property total. And that sort of deck right there, plus this landing and a balcony we have on the second floor uh, is less than 200 square feet. So that sort of designated the size. And meeting with uh, Tom and Brian, uh, we also noted the fact, if you see right here, this is uh, the ma maintaining the amount of uh, asphalt they have. Well, we 
plan to reduce the amount of as asphalt they have, but only maintain this section that you see here dashed in. Right now, the asphalt, asphalt goes all the way to here, um, across the front, and also continues essentially to right here. <coughs> okay. So we are getting rid of all of that and turning that over to um, permeable uh, vegetation. Okay. And do you have the percentages based on the new layout? Yes, so if you look at uh, the top left-hand side of your page here on this drawing, it actually shows the non-vegetated surface calculations. So existing non-vegetated, and again, this is a very small lot, half the size of a lot required in the R4 zone. So that pushes this coverage calculation skew, but we're at 68% right now. We propose to reduce that to 53 in total when you add everything up the way it is in the, in the new layout. Thank you. And uh, could you go over the setbacks for the front and the rear as well? Yes. So the, are we at the front, the front cottage, we don't plan to do anything to, other than on the third floor, you will see, and I'll show you that here. We are adding an attic level addition or a dormer essentially on the house. In, within the conforming setbacks of the, of the property. So that's the front cottage. It, it doesn't change from a sort of footprint standpoint. It's not moving anywhere. On the back cottage, we are conforming with respect to the lot 93 uh, setback, and we will be conforming with respect to lot 88 setback, and we will be albeit not a ton, but five inches more conforming than it currently exists on the, um, in relationship to Lot 95. And what was that number again, sorry? Uh, I believe that the current sort of, it, I think right now it's one inch off the property line to the overhang of the roof. We are going to make that <coughs> six inches. Okay. So an improvement of roughly five, five inches, <clears throat> excuse me. Yes. Uh, there, there was a question about uh, the foundation. Uh, we do have a foundation plan here. Uh, this right here is the existing front cottage foundation, which is on a con concrete post foundation. Now. Um, all of that sort of goes uh, to low frost lines um, okay. below the cottage. We plan to do the same thing essentially at the back cottage uh, with the new concrete post foundation. Again, that, that foundation has to allow for the movement of sand and water underneath the building. Uh, right now, the existing skirting that's on the ba uh, back cottage is fairly solid. It doesn't meet DEP's requirements for the passage of sand and water. Uh, if you look at sort of the new elevations of the fast cottage, that will be much more transparent than um, it is now and will allow the, the movement of sand and water as the DP requires. Thank you. Um, the back cottage itself, essentially we are reconstructing um, what's there now. Uh, the only, only sort of change that happens is this small dormer gets added on totally within the conforming setback of the zoning ordinance. Doesn't change the overhang? No, it doesn't change the overhang. Okay. Yeah, that, that happens in sort of back of the current overhang. Okay. Uh, we are sort of reconfiguring some window locations and putting in windows that are large enough to allow for uh, emergency egress out of bedrooms. Uh, right now, the windows that are there aren't large enough for that. Okay. Um, you can see here there will be a connect, the connecting deck between the two cottages. This cottage is essentially brought up to the same floor line as this front cottage. That, that two and a half feet allows that to happen. Um, so essentially they'll be able to walk between the two cottages. Right now what happens is they have to come out of the side door here and go down about seven or eight steps, come over here and come back up um, three or four steps. So we're sort of just making it easier to get back and forth between the two. 
Um, any other sort of specific questions with regard to the code of conduct itself? Questions from the board or comments? Why don't you hold off for right now? Uh, are there any letters on this case? Yes, there's one. I won't read it into uh, full record, but it's a letter from uh, David McDonald at 5 Vesper Street, lot 95. And they are in support of it. Support the project and have no objections. Thank you. Questions or comments from the board? In my opinion, uh, the structural condition of the existing cottage, the back cottage, is in pretty bad shape uh, based on the evaluation of the structural engineer. You did your due, di due, due diligence to, uh, to prove that. So uh, in my opinion, it's pretty straightforward. They're within the guidelines. It's improving based on the uh, conformance of the side set or the rear setback. Excuse me. For, yeah, rear setback. So uh, it's actually making the condition better. Um, yeah, I think you've done a nice job of laying that out for us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, let me open it up to uh, public opinion. If there's anybody from the public who'd like to speak again in behalf of this, please approach. If you just state your name and your address. All right, thank you. Hi, uh, John Agazarian. Our, I'm on the deed at 45 Bayview uh, in uh, Scarborough at Higgins Beach, and uh, we are completely in favor. Uh, no objections. Thank you. Thank you. Angelo Sioka, 12 Vesper, in complete uh, favor of this project. Project also. Thank you. Good evening. Rick Riffin, 2 Ridgeway Road and 46 Bayview Ave, in favor. Thank you. Could I have your name again, please? It's Rick Riffin. <laughs> Seeing no more people approaching the podium, we'll close the public portion of the meeting. Go back to the board looking for questions, comments, or motion. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Uh, could, could we just have a copy of the engineer's report for the file? I don't have a written uh, copy as of right now, but I can get that to you if that would help. Okay. This was all sort of a question. Verbal, email, back and forth, phone calls. Yeah, it, it would help to have something for a written record yeah. for, uh, for the director. Thank you. I could probably make that happen tomorrow. Appreciate it. Yeah. Read the criteria. Okay. We'll move on to the criteria. There are questions that we need to uh, to answer to move the appeal forward. It's a variance appeal. Thank you for taking the podium. So if you could uh, give us your response to the questions. The first question is, the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless a variance is granted. All right, let me just uh, get to that here. And what I will do is, uh, once you've answered, I'll go for a question and comment, and uh, we'll do a straw mm -hmm. poll from the, the board members to see where they stand on each question. Uh, thank you. I think it's a, a, important to note that uh, when the Seavers first purchased this property, I think they were sort of under the understanding in their minds that they could sort of repair the back cottage and basically lift it with a new foundation. Um, as we got into it, and, and from what we heard from the DEP, that turned out not to be the case. So it was a bit of a surprise for them, for sure. Um, also, uh, we would say that uh, the one-story back cottage, when they first purchased it, sort of met their needs uh, from a square footage standpoint. Um, the drip line footprint that's there, uh, you know, if we had to sort of reduce that more, they would basically lose one bedroom uh, from that cottage. Um, and sort of trying to conform to what is a very thin uh, profile for um, buildable area in a lot that um, unfortunately is sort of half the size of what the R4 zone is written for um, results in sort of a very long, thin building that's not very efficient. Um, so in answer to that, 
absent a variance, in our, in our opinion, the land does not uh, yield a reasonable return. Okay, thank you. Mr. Stark, your comments? Um, no, I'm fine with that. Okay. When was the property purchased? The purchase, property was purchased, um, I want to make sure I get this right. I think it was 2011, and I have that in here, I'm sorry, just a minute. Yeah, 2011. Anything else? No, I'm just having a hard time with purchasing it and not knowing that something couldn't be done. Not that it couldn't happen. Right. Due diligence. Okay. Well, I think... I, uh, I understand. If, Go ahead. If, oh, if you don't mind, in answer to that, I would say if... Uh, you sort of think back on the history of the property. The front cottage was actually raised in its sort of exact position um, and added onto vertically. Um, and so, cogn you know, I think someone would automatically perceive that, hey, I could just sort of continue that um, when they went to purchase the property. I can see that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Same with Mr. Dillon. This is the toughest one we have to get by is reasonable return because it, it, it's tough for us to actually wrap our hands around what is a reasonable return. I mean, I understand they, that. Bought, they bought the property in 2011. And in 2014, can it not yield a reasonable return unless this is done? And I, I don't know. Um, well, I would say based on what they know now, or, and I think everyone knows now that that cottage is not worth what they paid for it. Okay. I, I, I guess I kind of look at it a little bit differently. I I don't look at reasonable return as always have to, having to be a financial return. Um, I look at it this as as uh, fair use of the property, and if this uh, property is in in disrepair and not able to be used uh, as most structures would be used, then that is, that to me, that would meet the criteria of the reasonable return as well. You good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Richard? No, I like everything he's done. I think, I think the plans are good. I like the fact they've become more conforming in the back. As to the question, that is a tough one to get my to wrap, you know, the answer. I'm not quite sure. I think we, it's a tough one. It's just a tough one for me to I, that satisfied. I don't know if it really does. I think your point was pretty well taken on terms of usage. Is what we're trying to necessarily mean monetarily, but in terms of being able to use the property as you would expect to use it. So I think it does satisfy it in that way. Yeah, I agree with the other board members. Um, the separation on this particular case for me is having a structural engineer come in and evaluate the ridge beam in such bad condition, uh, the walls having shown movement, the floors as well having shown movement, show that there are major structural issues with the foundation. And if you don't do something about that, it only is going to get worse over time, especially in this shoreland zone area. It's uh, you have uh, environmental conditions that make it much worse. So um, when you first buy a property, I think you fall in love with it based on what you see, and you don't necessarily see the uh, things that are not so, good, so not so nice. And once you've been in it a few years, then you realize what you've done. And then when you go to correct it... You've all been there, right? <laughs> exactly. You, you, you run into the situation now, what, what do I do? And I think in this case, again, it's a difficult question to, to answer, reasonable return, but in this case, you still have to have a livable structure. So now it goes down to quality of life and, and quality of use. And, uh, and I think you've proven in this case, for me, that without doing something, the reasonable return will not be there because the structure will fail. And, and you may have already answered this question. Sorry if I'm speaking out of turn. But yeah. um, what, 
I mean, essentially, what is the structure going to be used for? I mean, it won't change in use as it is now, other than the fact that we won't have a full kitchen in it. But what is it used for now? Yeah, they have whenever they have visiting family, they stay in the back cottage. And they, their, their uh, daughters, they hope, as they grow older, will also stay back there, and their families. Okay. So this, this, this is essentially their home base in the States, um, and c they consider it their home and actually hope to use it uh, more and more as they sort of get closer to retirement. Yeah. By connecting that deck, does that change the cottage in any way, like a accessory or are we not even concerned? I, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. Right. I just didn't know the connecting of that deck. But that doesn't change the does not. Use, no, it's right? considered two there's two standalone structures at the yeah. moment and even a connecting deck is still gonna uh, leave them as two standalone structures, okay. you know. So So Tom, if they if they take the kitchen out and then at a later time decide to put it in, it won't be considered a, 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 an accessory. Well, they'd have to apply for an accessory to put the kitchen back in. It, then it would be considered an accessory to it. But uh, the uh, taking the kitchen out at this time, uh, it would just be a, an accessory sleeping quarters. Okay. So, so, so we would call it just accessory sleeping quarters, and you know, it doesn't have to physically be attached to do that. Uh, you would. But as a uh, uh, to have the kitchen facility in there and turn it into an accessory structure, uh, an accessory unit, under those rules, um, they would have to be, you know, they'd have to be their primary resident, and they'd have to be in residence. Uh, to so, so that may be something that you want to make sure that your client is aware of before you begin a project, uh, because that's something that may not be approved. Well, I guess the question for you guys would be, and maybe for Tom, and we should work this out at some point, but. There, it already is two dwellings, correct? That's correct. Yeah, we consider it two dwellings currently, and an accessory would be allowed there because it's there's no prohibition uh, as to lot size or anything when they change the rules on accessory units. So as long as it meets the requirements that are required to be an accessory, that it could be one. Okay, but that's but not part of the application. But it has to be the principal dwelling unit, and and uh, it sounds like it's going to be so. But again, that's not part of this application. They would have to come back before us if uh, if it was going to change, correct? No, nothing. Nothing is changing, I guess. No, right. Nothing right. regards the variance right. request as it exists right now. Right. Right. If they if they were going to ask for an accessory unit at a later date, they would just apply uh, through our office and it's administrative. Right. Yeah. Good. Okay. Okay. We'll come back to a vote on this later, but yes. we have a good feeling we'll do a summary at that point. Uh, second question. The need for the variance is due to the un unique circumstances of property and not the general condition in the neighborhood. Uh, if you look at uh, Exhibit uh, E, which I think is the last exhibit you have, or second to last exhibit, uh, there's an aerial photograph that shows uh, the coastal sand dune geology at uh, Higgins Beach. Uh, section D1 is what's considered frontal dune. And I'm sorry, I'll just point that here out, out real quick. It's yeah. this sheet right here. Very uh, this only shows a portion of Higgins Beach. There is sort of more of it sort of off to the uh, west here. But just the sort of front, front uh, D1 area is what's considered a frontal dune. Uh, that frontal dune designation uh, is specific to a uh, fairly small percentage of the rest of Higgins Beach. Um, as part of the cottage re reconstruction, um, we are also required to raise the height of a structural floor member to meet the DP requirements because of this, and we have to raise it two and a half feet. Um, furthermore, uh, this lot is half the size of uh, lot requirements in the R4 zone. Um, thus, without this variance, or thus, these variances are needed because of the unique characteristics of this lot. Thank you. Gentlemen, what's your opinion on that? Mr. Stark, start with you. 
I would totally agree. Um, I, I think that uh, because of the, the fact that they have two separate structures, that is a, a big part of this, and, and they're not asking to do anything with the main structure. It's they just want to raise the other one to make it the same height and make it conforming, uh, much more conforming than what it currently is, especially in regards to the to the uh, foundation. Thank you. I agree with all of that. I would agree. Okay. Mr. Richard? As well. I agree as well. It's a structural issue with this particular property or this particular structure. It's being addressed. <coughs> Third question. Granting the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. Uh, our, uh, we submit basically that the granting this variance actually helps maintain the characteristics of the small beach community that's here. Um, if you look at sort of the historical precedent surrounding the properties, um, all the cottages are sort of fairly small um, in size. Um, and we think allowing us to sort of maintain that small size will continue that. Um, if, if we are so essentially forced to conform to uh, the setbacks that are there, it will make for a much larger structure rather than two separate smaller structures. Thank you. Jim. I think in light of uh, really what the character of that neighborhood, pretty much all of us, almost all, over the, by far the majority of the units are now, have been re renovated, uh, been a lot of improvements done down there, I think really for the better. Um, they all look nice, there have been, been nice jobs done, so I think this probably brings up more into character with the current neighborhood uh, than, it, than it was. I agree with that, it just it makes sense. It's changing with the times, correct. One thing I forgot to mention, sorry, is uh, we also maintain sort of a one-story height, um, which I think is important as well. Yep. The only thing that's a little unique is, is the deck connecting the two. But, I mean, I don't think that's going to dramatically alter the essential character of the neighborhood. It probably will be unique down there. But. Thank you. Mr. Richard? No, I think it's right in keeping with what's going on down there. I think you guys did a nice job. Thank you. And I am as well in agreement. I think if you tried to put a roof over that uh, connecting deck, that would change it. It would look like a single structure. And yeah. then it now looks like a large single structure, but with having uh, an uncovered deck that it does seem like a separate dwelling and uh, doesn't change the character. Not a good point. And I, one thing I will point out, too, is that deck is sort of configured somewhat in response to DP's requirements. It has to be sort of three feet above grade essentially, to allow for water and sand to move underneath it. Thank you. And the fourth question. The hardship is not a result of the action taken by the applicant or a prior, prior owner. So th this hardship is caused by changing land use requirements over time. The height variance is needed to comply with uh, DEP regulations for movement of sand and water underneath the structure. Um, when the back cottage was orig originally built, there was no local ordinances or standards for setbacks. Um, the homeowner would like to bring the existing back cottage up to date with respect to sort of current life safety uh, codes and energy codes. Uh, right now, I think I mentioned this before, the back cottage has no insulation. And our, that's the other thing that happens to us as architects is, is the more we do stuff to a house, we then have to also conform to building codes. Um, especially with respect to energy as well. Um, and then the thing I, and we mentioned earlier about uh, emergency egress from the bedrooms is an important piece too, especially in a sort of densely populated uh, community like Higgins Beach. Thank you. Jim? Yeah, I, again, I, I, I like your answer. Thank you. That pretty much covers it. Um, I think part of it also is the fact that it's such an old structure that uh, any old structure is eventually going to need some type of improvements just to keep it standing. So um, I'm good with the answer on that. I'm good with that answer. It improves the, the building and conforms to requirements. Yeah. I'd agree. Mr. Richard? I'm in agreement. I'm in agreement as well. It's not an was not a action by this applicant or a prior owner that caused this. Okay, I'm going to open it up the board for further questions or comments. 
I think you've done a, a real nice job of putting this together. I like the uh, I like the design of it. I like the way that you did what you could to bring it more into conformance. I know that you're pretty restricted with the size of the lot. But, uh, you've done a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Questions, comments, or a motion? I'd move to approve Appeal 2414, contingent uh, on the DEP approval. Uh, I would uh, like to add to that. I would also, wherever I put my notes, uh, there we go. Oh, yeah, the engineer's report. Yeah. Contention upon yeah. the engineer's report uh, getting to uh, code enforcement. Definitely. I, I will check and see if he's around tomorrow, um, but I, I know that's al already almost written. And I know it was uh, stated on record as the intent for the construction period to stay outside of the summer window. Yes. And uh, we would I'd like to make that part of the contingency as well. Thank you. Yeah. So what I would like to do for the vote, I'd like to go through each question first. Vote those in and out, and then we'll do an overall vote. So on the first question, that the property can y cannot yield a reasonable return unless a variance is granted. All those in favor? That's five. The need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not the general condition in the neighborhood. All those in favor? Again, that's five. Granting of the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. All those in favor? Again, five. And the hardship is not a result of the action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. And all those in favor? Five. Now, overall motion to approve appeal 2414 as presented with the contingencies that we've put in place. All those in favor? We didn't. I'm sorry? We didn't have a second. We didn't have a second on the motion by Mr. Oh, I'll second that. You sure? Yes. Okay. I think I will. Good catch. Thank you, Carol. Now, I'll say it again. <laughs> All those in favor? And that's five. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. is going on. Uh, we had an appeal this evening that was tabled. It's Appeal 2415, uh, of Practical Difficulty Variance of Donald and Susan Hamill. We're going to table that till next month. So we'll move on to Appeal Number 2416, which is the third appeal for the evening. And it's Angelico, is it Siaco? Uh, Angelo Sioka. Uh, Sioka, thank you, excuse me, of 12 Vesper Street. And it is a variance appeal for the demolition and rec reconstruction of a home seven feet from Bayview Avenue property line and 20 feet from Vespa Street property line. The basis of the appeal is that it's an R4 zone and it requires a 30 foot setback and it is at 23 feet and 10 feet respectively. So if the representative is almost done, we will let him take the podium. <laughs> Please state your name and, and your address and your affiliation to this appeal. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, my name is Jim Fisher. I work with Northeast Civil Solutions, and we are here this evening representing Mr. Sioka. Also this evening uh, with us is uh, Peter Anderson, architect extraordinaire, who has uh, <laughs> taken a, uh, a gander at this particular project, and uh, we'll show that to you, the results of his hard labors here in uh, just a moment. Uh, in the uh, interest of brevity, we'll try to keep this short, because you've uh, seen this project before, or this site before. Uh, or some of us have, anyway. Uh, what I'd like to do is just do a very quick recap uh, for those of us who were around in uh, late 2009. You may remember, although we've seen an awful lot of these, and this is another Higgins Beach one, and they seem to be everywhere, between Higgins Beach and Pine Point. 
Uh, we were here initially when Mr. Sioka originally purchased the property in 2009, uh, having taken exactly what I think Mr. Dillon mentioned, that, or somebody had mentioned, that you, know, you take a look at properties and say, this is really cool, I want to get into this, and only after they buy it do they realize, what have I done? Uh, <laughs> there was certainly some uh, uh, cognizant effort on behalf of Mr. Sioka to know what he was getting into, to be sure, uh, and believed to, because the preponderance, or working toward a preponderance of the homes in the Higgins Beach area, uh, for those of us who spend some time down there, we'll know that uh, of the 200 plus properties that are there, well over half of them have been redone uh, in some way or another over the course of the last couple of decades. Most of those homes down there, as we're probably aware also, are anywhere from a little over 100 years to within about uh, 70 years of construct the original homes of construction. And most of those were constructed as cottages, as was this one. Uh, this is a relatively small, the existing house is a relatively small cottage, uh, was uh, constructed as such. Uh, about uh, 75 years ago, and uh, needs uh, to be replaced. It's in, in dire need of replacement based on the structural integrity of the foundation, uh, the no lack of insulation, the somewhat haphazard construction. You've got some photographs in your packet, and you can see by that that uh, uh, the, well, the foundation is, uh, the integrity of that is, is lacking to be sure, but you'll also see that uh, if you look at it from the Vesper Street side, that the front right-hand corner of the structure has uh, settled to the extent that uh, the the torque on the windows is actually, you see that the window frames are generally speaking fairly level, but the house is actually sinking around them. Uh, these are the ones in the front right hand corner. You get the idea. It's, many of the houses are like that in this area, and they're going to continue to be like that. Uh, but to be able to make these much more, these homes now much more conforming in terms of current zoning and current code, uh, which is, that's one of the reasons why I continue to show up before you, as others do uh, for homes in this particular section. So when we were here in 2009, uh, we had a, uh, a different type of uh, architectural plan. Mr. Sioka uh, had uh, asked a, uh, an architect to be able to take a look at it from what he would originally like to have had there. And when we did approach the board at that point, it was a little bit untenable. Uh, we went from the current one-story structure to a proposal of a three-story structure that was itself 15 feet longer than the existing house is right now and about three feet wider. Uh, the comment on the board, the comments from the board at that point were, we get it, there are other houses down there, but not necessarily in this particular area. It looks a little large going from what we've got to what you're proposing. Uh, can you please take a look at this? It was a suggestion to table, and it was a suggestion that we adhered to, to be sure, uh, to be able to tone down the house a little bit. Uh, the previous uh, uh, person who was here had indicated uh, for a property that is actually right across the street from this one, or catty corner across the street, that uh, a lot of these problems are generic to the area and uh, we're looking to be able to replace that and we wanted to make this house uh, significantly uh, more conforming to the area overall pursuant to the board's request. So instead of a three-story house, we're now looking at a two-story house. Instead of 15 feet larger than the uh, house that's there right now, it's actually three feet shorter. So we've decreased uh, the overall nonconformity fairly considerably given the size of the lot and the house that's on it right now. Uh, it's also, instead of being about three feet wider, it's now two feet less in breadth. So the overall house is uh, significant, well, is a bit smaller in footprint and significantly smaller given that it's only two stories. Um, it does have uh, some, some great unique characteristics as far as design is concerned. Um, we're uh, proposing a rooftop deck. It doesn't have anything to do with zoning in particular, but it's a cool house that fits into that, that area. <laughs> One of the other comments of the board at that time, I'm not sure if the member was, but uh, there is a, there's a very unique house that's immediately across Vesper Street from this one. It's sort of euphemistically referred to as the Lighthouse House. Uh, it's a relatively small cottage, or it's a beautiful home that's been redone several years ago, and it, it, part of it looks like a lighthouse, which is very cool. And one of the comments was it would be kind of neat to be able to show something architecturally that would not mirror the image so much, but complement it to the point where it becomes almost a gateway. That area of Vesper Street, uh, for those of us who know Higgins Beach, tends to be a somewhat major pedestrian thoroughfare to be able to access the beach, which is right at the end of Vesper Street. 
uh, and the comment was this would be kind of cool to be able to have something that would complement the other house and houses that are in the area uh, with a bit of a modern uh, infrastructure, modern structure, and then uh, see how that would fly as long as we can uh, reduce the overall scope of it, which we have now done. Mr. Sioka sat back a little ways. This was uh, almost four years ago, and three and a half years ago, and uh, took a look at that and said, okay, what, are, what can I really do? This will be his principal residence, by the way. He does plan to move into this and, uh, uh, and live there uh, for good. And um, so what he's looking at is, you know, how long of a driveway do I need? Do I really need a car? Not really. Um, I'd rather be able to put the money into the house and have a, uh, a nicer home, certainly than the one that is there. Um, so he uh, engaged the services of an architect to be able to do that. And uh, it took about three years back and forth to let's see what's going on. We had a, uh, a charrette, uh, a, a neighborhood meeting last summer. We were initially intending to come back to the board in the autumn uh, and actually had submitted for that time frame. But again, given the relatively short windows of construction, uh, certainly you can construct throughout the winter, but it's not necessarily ideal. So we decided to, but uh, well, we didn't even come to the board at, at this past autumn, but we decided to uh, withdraw that from having submitted it to, uh, to Brian and said, let's just take care of this in the springtime. We, there will be no construction during the, uh, the, window, the summer window, the Memorial Day window. <coughs> And shortly thereafter, as with the previous project, we'd like to be able to uh, begin construction and then go from there. So toward that end, I'm happy to answer any questions, address any comments that you may have, and we'll do what we can. Thank you. Uh, any letters on this one, Carol? We have one. It's a letter from Earl Hall, and it doesn't show his address. Property 44 Bayview, thank you. And it is a letter against this change, saying that the property owner is seeking the maximum return of the investment, not, not just a reasonable return. The granting of any variance should be an exception, not the rule. Request the variance be denied until the above items are addressed. I'll, so I'll read them into the record. Request the board not consider granting the variance unless you address the following. Have the home set back 20 feet from Vesper will be out of character for that street, na neighborhood, and beach community. Will create a parking problem on Vesper Street as people will park in front. Having new home constructed 20 feet from Vesper will be, block, will be blocking existing views of the beach from current property owners. They believe there are other feasible, feasible alternatives. Again, the property owner is seeking maximum return, not reasonable return, and the granting of the variance should be an exception, not the rule. Considerations for the board. Having the home built on the existing front setback thereby eliminating the blocking of the views from the property owner on, the, on Bayview and parking problems on Vesper. Having the property fenced on the Bayview side to stop access by vehicles to the property from the street. Have any further board, future board address the, fr the frontage setback problems. In short, if almost all the homes are set back seven feet from the property line, there's not any reason to require a new home to set back 20 feet from the property line. Any uh, address the elevation story height of any newly constructed homes at Hismans Beach. Thank you for your consideration, Earl Hall. You may want to take a moment and, and address sure. some of those. Do you, and do you want to have it in hand so you can see what? No, I think I remember okay. the, okay. the key points. Um, all due respect to Mr. Hall, everybody's nope, certainly entitled to their opinion, and, and we certainly would like to be able to address those. Okay. Um, one of the uh, things that uh, we do have to be cognizant of, and it may be that Mr. Hall is or is not cognizant of it, and that is the, uh, the traveled way. The streets themselves uh, in the Higgins Beach area are, as typically in many places, only a small portion of the actual right-of-way. So when you're actually looking at the house right now in the, in the um, rights or the property lines that we're referring to as far as the variance is concerned, are not taking into consideration, and they, don't, they shouldn't be by law, going all the way out to the street. There's a fair number or a fair amount of land that is between the edge of the pavement and the actual property line. So the house, what we try to do uh, from the building envelope perspective, which is what Mr. Hall is referring to, is make it as non or as conforming as possible or at least non-conforming or less non-conforming than the structure may already be. As far as the 20-foot setback, it sounds like he was saying it ought to be able to fit in the building envelope. 
Um, right now, that setback is four and a half feet from the edge, from the front of the road or front of the uh, the right of way, our property line, and we're proposing to go to 20 feet. So we're making the um, the structure, proposing that the structure be considerably less non-conforming on the Vesper Street side than it is right now. Uh, likewise, on the Bayview side, uh, because we're in a corner lot, we're somewhat stymied by having two front setbacks. Uh, we're decreasing the non-conformity on the Bayview side as well by pushing the house further back from Bayview than it is currently. So overall, with re all due respect to his comments, we're actually making it considerably less non-conforming uh, than it is currently. And the building envelope that is there um, is about 40 feet long, but it's only four and a half feet wide. So because of the two fronts that we've got, and then the side, the two sides as well. So in effect, there's very little to almost no building, no practicable building envelope that we can work with. Um, so toward that end, again, we certainly respect his opinion, but this is really a best-case scenario, win-win all over regarding what's there now or what could be there. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go to the board for questions and comments. I, you know, I, of course, we always like to listen to the comments um, from the public. I, if, and while we may or may not respond to those in the, the manner that, that the public would like to hear. I think our job here is to make sure that we make sure that you're as close to uh, to the conformance as we can. I think you've done a very good job of evaluating the property and, and making it as close to it, less non-conforming than, than, than it has been and probably uh, done the best job that you could do on this. So I, I really don't have any more questions on this. I'm good. Do we... I know we have all the plans and everything. Do we have a drawing of what the home would look like? Yes. By the way, what I started to mention with the uh, in conjunction with the charrette that uh, the neighborhood meeting that Mr. Sioka had last summer, um, the, uh, he invited uh, all of his neighbors or all the ones that he knew, several of the neighbors there, or some of the property owners don't actually live in the houses, they rent them out. But uh, we had a great summer party and, and explained to everybody, showing some of these details that I'll show you here in just a moment, explained to everyone uh, who was attending what this was all about, what he was planning to do. Uh, hence the reason also for three years of a gap between the initial uh, proposal and this one, actually almost four years. And uh, you have a letter in your packets that were actually, it was generically worded, but it was signed by actually 10 of those immediate abutters, um, so all of whom were in favor of this. The existing cottage, when you take a look at that in the pictures in your file, also needs a lot of work. Um, and this, I think you'll find, is a huge step in the right direction. Mr. Chair, do we have to do anything with that where it's part of our packet? or I think it's already in record. Okay. Thank you. So, Mr. A, if you have any architectural questions, certainly Mr. Anderson can uh, can address them. But um, in the interim, uh, what I'll do is this: he has prepared some outstanding boards. These are uh, renditions that, as if the house were already there, um, with the photograph. We've seen these some of these before. Uh, but uh, so what you're looking at essentially are, are several views that I'm going to be showing you. This is the proposed house right here, uh, relative to the other houses, the photographs of which are actual. So these other houses up and down the road are actually already there. And again, this is what we propose from this particular view. This is the view as if you're coming down into Higgins Beach, down Bayview, paralleling the water, and continuing to head down uh, in a general northeasterly direction. This is what you're going to see. This is the house, uh, the, sort of the mirror image that we were trying to get, um, pursuant to the uh, comment by the board member several years ago. This is coming down Vesper Street. This is sort of this gateway, uh, basic, I mean, it's a road, obviously, but this is sort of, in the summertime in particular, this is where a lot of people from the area uh, come down Vesper Street to be able to access the beach at the end. So this is the house, the style of which that they would see as they're walking down Vesper. And then again, looking their other direction down Bayview, this is uh, again trying to mirror the image here, albeit uh, you know, a bit muted, but uh, nevertheless trying to come up with something that is uh, uh, uniform in the neighborhood. So again, you'll see um, what we're looking at here. The house is relatively small, considerably more smaller than, than it was proposed before, and it's considerably smaller than many of the houses in the neighborhood. Um, I can go on, but I won't necessarily unless you'd like something else. Um, to see something further. What I would like to do, though, it's, it's kind of cool. I've never actually done this. For all the work that we've done in uh, Higgins Beach, uh, I'd actually never really taken the opportunity to go around and take some photographs of some of the houses that have been recently redone that are uh, 
um, very, in some cases very unique, in other cases fairly basic, but they're very cool. Uh, it shows a lot of the elements in some of these houses to the extent that you're interested uh, that we're trying to uh, capture in this house as well. You don't have to take a look at them. I'll just pass them down if you want to kind of pass them around. These are all houses that are within the general vicinity of this house in Higgins Beach. I assume they're being routed to uh, address the essential character question. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Can, Mr. Fisher, could you give the show at that next slide that you have there? Um, this is the, uh, the Vesper Street West view, so if you're actually coming from the beach, walking back into the community, um, this is what you're going to see as far as the house this way. Um, so you can see that it's two stories. Um, it's got this little access area, kind of a cupola thing up here, and then it's got a roof deck over portion of it. The other portion is actually a uh, slanted roof like, like we would typically see. So when you actually view the, the property from the other direction of Vesper or from Bayview, it's a two-story house with a roof on with a slanted roof on it. When you look at it from this perspective, coming from the beach, it's got a, a half of it, or that half roof comes up to this side. Uh, so it's not only a camouflage, as it were, from the Vesper Bayview side, um, but it's also practical because of storage there. And then the other half, the beach half of this, has got the deck. You'll see in some of these photographs, to the extent that you may be interested, um, that there are uh, quite a number of houses down there with rooftop decks. That's why I brought this whole comment up, is that I never really looked at that before. And it actually works quite well in any beach community, but in, in this one in particular, because the houses are generally smaller. There are some exceptions. There are some very large ones down there, relatively speaking, uh, but most of them fit in character very nicely with the overall neighborhood. Well, while I applaud the fact that you're actually bringing it back more into conformity for everything and addressing some of those concerns, by what we're seeing there, and it may just be that it's just the drawing, but it just seems like it's, it, it does seem a little bit out of character down there, the last one you showed me. Um, I mean, I could be wrong. I mean, that could be just the way I'm viewing it, but it just yeah, doesn't I mean, seem like it fits in with something. It's different. Point. It's yeah. unique. When you take a look at some of the photographs that I think are coming down, Sheila, uh, you, you'll see that uh, um, it's not as out of character as you might otherwise think. Um, there are quite a number of houses uh, literally in the immediate vicinity and then certainly throughout Higgins Beach and Pine Point and other places um, that are going with a you know, slightly more modern style typically than the, the quintessential New England kind of look from the middle of the part of the last century, et cetera. And there's quite a number of houses that do actually have roof decks and uh, these types of entrances. wouldn't call it a turret necessarily, but although some of them have things that look like round castle turrets almost, um, it's different. It's unique. Uh, and think that it's a very eclectic mix in Higgins Beach and it's becoming more so. And we think it would fit very, very nicely into the community actually because that seems to be what people are really kind of gravitating towards. Mr. Richards, any questions? No, right now. Okay. Any comment from, uh, from the planning group? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm just giving you a chance to speak. You know, I don't want to leave you, <laughs> leave you out. Uh, I do have a comment, but uh, it's not pertinent right at the moment, but I can tell you. You can bring it on. All right. So uh, what the house is proposed to be on piles. Yes. Right. You just approved a house on piles over on Shipwreck Drive. Um, that's the first pile-driven house we've had down there for ages. And I will tell you that I had about 50 calls of people's houses shaking uh, while they were driving the piles. It was a busy day or two, and uh, I would suggest that this one be put on the cement piers, such as everybody else has been using it, the previous occupant used, instead of a, a pile-driven house. Um, as you know, Higgins Beach is really, uh, uh, it's a sand dune on top of peat moss. And so what you do on one end jiggles on the other end. <laughs> so uh, we have very lot of concern from that. Uh, from having plumbing in there driving those piles. That's a great point, and yeah. one we would not have thought about. Yeah. So that's, there shouldn't be any issue with that. Yeah. You will, by the way, just as a aside, you're going to see a lot, or we are going to see a lot more of that, um, because as you're probably aware, just a couple of years ago, there was an expansion by the DEP, actually by the MG, a main geological survey, um, through the DEP, such that any houses, not just in Scarborough, but anything in this uh, generally speaking, erosion hazard area, shoreland zone, et cetera, because of the predicated uh, uh, three-foot rise in sea level, 
uh, that we're supposedly looking at over the course of the next century, a lot of the houses we're going to be seeing now are going to be on uh, piles yeah. or some sort of elevated foundation. Okay. So, so for this project, you wouldn't have a problem changing the foundation? Um, no, that's more of an architectural question, but I don't think that the foundation would be, since we're designing from the ground up, it shouldn't be a problem. So more of an engineering question, um, we weren't, we didn't consider Peter. Yeah, if you could please state your name. Thank you. Peter Anderson with PDT Architects, Architect. Um, we had soils tests done um, on the site and reviewed with our engineer options and conferred with the owner in terms of preferences for those options and as well as conferring with, with Jim um, as a, a civil engineer expertise. And we opted to just go with the, the pile foundation because of durability, longevity, and performance issues. Uh, in terms of the concrete uh, uh, type support posts that you mentioned, we didn't consider those initially. Uh, we would be willing to take a look at them, certainly. Uh, <clears throat> but it's really a question for the engineers to get back to us to tell us based on the geotech information they have and <clears throat> the loads created by the house itself um, what the implications are for that. So, but uh, if, if they feel it's, it's doable and uh, Mr. Sioka is amenable, then certainly we could take that turn. That would be a change I think in, I, in re requiring that, though. So I think before we would do that, we would have to consider that very closely. There's multiple ways of putting piles in. Mm -hmm. There's micro piles, which can get drilled in. There's spin, fin piles, which can be spun in. And then there's driven piles. So Correct. there's multiple ways of doing it. But I, before we go and tell people how to do it because of the noise issue, I'd be more likely to restrict the time that they could drive those piles I, if I they chose to go that I way. I don't think it was so much a noise issue as it was a structural issue with some of the other okay. houses around. Is that true? That's true. Okay. It, was, it was not a noise issue. It was the uh, uh, it was the jiggling of the whole sand dune. Okay, gotcha. Uh, it was shaking. Every, it was knocking things off people's shelves and stuff in their homes uh, as far as five cottages and six cottages away. It, it it really is. It's a. It's something we need to think about. It's something we've never had to on that one. Uh, to broach. There are many other options that. Uh, 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 that's. I've been here 13 years, I think, and that's the first pile-driven uh, foundation I've seen. Uh, it's certainly not uh, exclusive to foundations. Is having driven pile, uh, but there's certainly screw piles, and there's all kinds of other options for them. So. But I appreciate you bringing that up. It's, yeah. a, it's a very good point. I, 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 my, my life is, yeah. <laughs> I think if we approve this, if we decide to go ahead with an approval, uh, I'd like to add in there that um, an engineer's report be uh, supplied to, to the um, Zoning Board of Appeals or the, to the Code Enforcement Officer um, with the options there and, uh, and, and what their findings are on that. Because sure. if, if it's feasible, I would like to see it any way except, except driven. Okay. If, if that's causing structural problems for other people, I, I'd like to try to... And I think that. that's a fair point, and I think it's also fair for the Code Enforcement Office to work that, because it, it, the complaint would go through them. So yeah. that would be the, the right people to bring it through. Certainly. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? So I, I would ask that if, you, if you're going to put that responsibility on us, that... Uh, that they bring back, you know, that the pile-driven foundation is their only option. Correct. All yeah, right. And, and so that they bring, uh, but that's not the way we wear that. Okay. So. That's fair. Yeah. Any other questions or comments from the board? I do. Um, okay. The uh, the rooftop deck that's only accessible through that. Uh, Spiral staircase area. That's, That's correct. correct. That was it. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to take this moment to uh, open it up for questions and comments from the public. Is there anybody here to speak? Hello again. Uh, John Agazarian, 45 Bayview. Uh, my cottage is actually right there in the picture. 
Um, I'm here to support the project, um, feel that this is absolutely what our neighborhood needs. I'm looking forward to having the existing structure uh, changed um, and uh, couldn't be more supportive of what, uh, what's being done here. I hope it passes. Thank you. Thank you for the feedback. Good evening, Rick Griffin, 46 Bayview Ave. I actually live right across the street from Mr. Shoka, and ironically, the first day I met him was in this very chamber. I had just bought my house <coughs> a couple months after his, and I was told that some monstrosity is going to go up. And like, like you put, put boys out, Rich is like, oh my God, what have I done? This is my neighbor, and we shook hands. Um, got to know what his plans were. I. I thought I went to a barbecue with a Surratt, thanks Mr. Fisher. <laughs> a new word tonight. Um, I actually will have a block view as part of my what's going to happen. He's going to put up a much more valuable house. Uh, the duress, I've been in his house, it does need some work. He calls it Eyesore with a small S, so it's Eyesore. Um, it's still <laughs> lovely property. Um, so my taxes will go up as a result. Um, my sister parks on his lawn illegally. He's going to block her pocket spot with his fence, but they're good friends. What he's doing is he's put a lot of careful thought into it. He has met with most of the neighbors, if not all. Um, Peter has done a great job. Mr. Fish has done a great job. Angela loves Higgins Beach. He cares about it. Um, it is a little different, but so many more are out there. If you've driven down Bayview lately, there's one house that was a small cottage is now one of the biggest things I've ever seen in my life right on Bayview. It looks beautiful. I'm glad they're doing it. I'm completely in favor of what Angelo is doing. Fully support him, and I hope you pass it for him. Long overdue. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> Seeing no one else willing to speak, I'm going to close the public portion of the meeting and go back to questions and comments from the board. I think you've done a terrific job as a property owner um, of involving the neighbors and getting approvals from, from everyone that you possibly could. Uh, I, I commend you for that. And um, unlike some people, I actually do like to see the, the character that's going into this neighborhood. It's a unique neighborhood for the town of Scarborough, and um, and I think that I think that's something that's kind of needed. It's kind of nice to have an area like that. So I, I like the designs that you've come up with, both of you. And I do appreciate the effort of the engineers and the applicant. Um, when they first came before the board years ago, it was quite a bit larger. And your efforts to keep it small and actually make it more conforming uh, are appreciated. So thank you. And I, and I understand not everybody in the public is always going to be happy with the decision by the board. But in this case, I think the applicant has gone out of their way to try and work with the community and try and uh, make it so that it's, it's a viable option for everybody, not just himself. So I do appreciate the efforts that you've taken, and uh, I think it's a good example. Mr. Chair, could I just see that letter that we had? Certainly. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Final comments or a motion, then? I just had one quick question. I'm just reading through this, yeah. but um, on the parking, did you say there's not going to be a vehicle or the concern wasn't for parking? Did I misunderstand that as far as the new home? With oh, no, there's, there's a driveway. Okay. There will still be there. will be plenty of parking for um, the driveways. So one of the issues of, uh, of Higgins Beach is that people tend to park wherever they possibly can, and uh, this, whether they ask permission or not. And uh, there's plenty of space on site for uh, Mr. Sioko, who's going to be living there, to have guests as well. Okay. When we take the time to get answer the questions, we'll use the same for format that we've been using. I'll get your comments on the individual questions. And so if you stay at the podium and, and uh, read in your answers, I'd appreciate that. Certainly. Uh, the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless the variance is granted. If I may, the existing house on the lot is over 70 years old, is structurally unsound, and is in dire need of reconstruction. Because of poor building materials and haphazard construction over many decades, uh, NCS and the architect are recommended to Mr. Sioka that he rebuild the structure instead of attempting to repair it. Uh, the house is supported by a cinder block frost wall foundation 
that is substantially degraded, it's getting more so, uh, thereby affecting the structural integrity of the entire house. The existing house, if reconstructed in place, would have to be moved off of the premises so that a new foundation could be built. The house literally couldn't be moved onto the lot. You have to move it somewhere else, and that's going to be interesting to do if we ever have to do it that way. Um, so the new house could be built and moved, or a new foundation could be built, and then the house would be moved back onto the foundation and rebuilt in stages. Uh, this movement would further compromise the structural integrity of the older home uh, and do nothing to address the nonconformity. The cost to move the structure off of the lot, rebuild the foundation, move it back onto the lot, and rebuild it in pieces is not at all reasonable uh, the, financially. Uh, the house itself has, ex has exceptionally limited value due to its uh, present condition, so if a variance is not granted, there would be little reasonable return uh, barring a complete reconstruction of the structure. In order to yield a reasonable return, increase line of safety, line of sight safety at the intersection, and better conform to current zoning, we respectfully request that variance be granted out of necessity. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, I, again, I think you've done a great job of, of uh, bringing this into as close into conformance as possible, and, uh, and great design. I, I like the project altogether, and uh, reasonable return. Well, if the thing falls down, you're not going to get any return. Sounds, I think pretty much all the properties down there that are you know, 70, 80, 100 years old, it, it's hard to expect them um, sitting on sand to to not shift and, and not have some major issues. I agree with all that. Yeah, um, the reason why I asked the letter is I'm just looking at this number two here. I, I don't even think this is something we're addressing, Mr. Chair, but it, it comes to this. Hmm. There's no other feasible alternatives. That's not one of the questions we're even addressing. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah, I I would agree that the reasonable return. I mean, if the if the structure's integrity isn't the problem, then I would I would have no problem agreeing with that. Yeah. Mr. Richard. Yeah, I think they've done a nice job too. I think um, the place obviously has to be rebuilt. I'm in agreement. I think bringing it into more conforming more conforming is a good idea, and I think that kind of, I think it's been met. I think the applicant has proven that uh, the due diligence that uh, there is an issue structurally and it needs to be addressed, and if you don't address it, then there is no reasonable return. So I agree. Second question. Need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of this property and not the general condition in the neighborhood. Uh, this uh, 50 by 100 lot was created as part of an original subdivision of Higgins Beach in 1897, uh, when there was no zoning in the area, obviously. With the enactment of property zoning and its evolution over the past several decades, setback requirements that were not in place when the original house was built now pro prohibit the construction of any structure on the property without a variance, given the small size of the building envelope that is there. The unique circumstance of the property uh, is due to the creation of zoning restrictions and not due to the general conditions of the neighborhood. Thank you. I think that pretty much sums it up. I'm good with that. I'm good as well. I would agree. Thank you. I'm in agreement as well. The granting of the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. In its present condition, the existing house is in exceptionally poor physical condition and detracts from the aesthetic condition of the neighborhood. Granting this variance will serve multiple purposes. It will increase the integrity of the structure, the structural integrity of it, uh, substantially increase the aesthetic appeal of the house, make the structure less non-conforming relative to current zoning, align the house more favorably with other houses in the immediate vicinity uh, that have been recently rebuilt and increase the safety of the intersection as far as lines of sight are concerned. The overall character of the neighborhood would be greatly enhanced by the granting of the variance. Thank you. Board? Yeah, no, I have to agree. I think it will enhance the character of the neighborhood. I, I like what you're doing there. I like it as well. I would agree with most of what you said, but I, just from the pictures I'm seeing, I, I don't think it enhances the character of the neighborhood with what I've seen for pictures. I think it's definitely unique and it is going to stick out a little bit, but that's own, my, my own personal opinion. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Richard? I'm in agreement. I think 20 years ago it, it wouldn't have satisfied this question, but now I think it does. I think it blends in nicely what's going on down there. And again, I agree. I think it will not alter it significantly. Hardship is not a result of the action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. The hardship is indeed due solely to the enactment of zoning restrictions in this area uh, after the fact, and it is not at all due to any action taken by Mr. Sioka or any prior owner. Thank you. No, I have to agree with that, I, along with the, the time that that structure has been there uh, in that particular location. 
I agree as well. I would agree. Mr. Richard? Yep, I would agree as well. I believe it's extremely clear as well. So, we go back to the board for questions, comments, or a motion. Move that we approve 2416 uh, as presented. I'll second that. And I think we also want to add to it that we are going to have uh, some type of a report on the type of yes. foundation. Yes, report for the foundation as well as uh, no summer construction. Correct. Got a little no before everybody? Great. Absolutely fine. Okay. All right. So uh, on this one, I think we were pretty clear it's all straightforward. We'll do an up and down vote on the overall motion. We have a second for it. Thank you, Carol, for keeping us in line. So all those in favor? Are you going down individually? Or uh, no, I, I think it was pretty clear that it's on record as to where we stand. So, okay. so all, all those in favor to approve 2416? Is that five? I'm sorry, I didn't see. That was I, I didn't lot. agree with C, so I wouldn't vote. One opposed. Yeah. Four to one. Four to one. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank, Thank you. you Good luck. Good job. That's a lot. Final appeal for the evening is Appeal 2417, a variance appeal for Philip LaRue, owner of 37 Vesper Street, map U1, lot 27. And they are con doing construction on a second story addition on a structure with a non conforming setback. Basis for the appeal is in an R4 zone, it requires 15 feet on the side and 30 feet on the, set on the front. Mr. Fisher, you're up again. I am indeed. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, my name is Jim Fisher with Northeast Civil Solutions here this evening uh, representing <coughs> excuse me, uh, Mr. LaRue and also with us this evening our, uh, the architect is uh, out in the hallway, um, but uh, he's the one who if you have any architectural questions of this nature then you can certainly ask him if Mr. Wilson who's just stepped out for a moment. Um, this is great. This is easy. Uh, a year ago I think one of the comments from the board was uh, see if you can keep your presentation under five minutes. <laughs> No problem. <laughs> uh, on this project, there is no change whatsoever from the existing footprint of the house. The foundation is already there. This is one of the rare houses that, uh, in my opinion, um, that does not have a structural integrity problem of those houses that are looking to be uh, uh, added onto or redone. So all we're doing here, and, and actually to emphasize this point, Almost everything in the Higgins Beach area and the Pine Point area of Scarborough typically requires a DEP permit. That's just where the properties are located. Because of the benign nature of what we're doing actually here, you've got a letter from the DEP as part of your packet that says no permit is actually even required. Um, all we're really doing is going straight up. Uh, and the board has been generally favorably in the past. Uh, it doesn't mean that we have to count on that in the future, but uh, again, the footprint in the DEP was very specific about this. We did submit to them for this, so they took a look at the plan before they determined that no permit was needed. Uh, and they said basically as long as you are not uh, going outside of the existing footprint, they have absolutely no issues with it. Uh, and then staying underneath the height requirement, obviously, we're far beneath that. So toward that end, we simply ask for the variance to be able to build the uh, upper floors of this. And there's actually there's the foundation, which is the garage portion of it, the garage storage, work, work area, et cetera. Um, then there's the living area right above that, and then we're going to have the floor that's uh, proposed to be right above that. Um, so in essence, um, we're looking for just a, uh, a variance approval to allow what's there right now in terms of the nonconformity for the foundation to continue to exist. 
Thank you. Thank you. Questions or comments from the board? No change in the impervious soil. None whatsoever. So no driveways moved or anything. Overhang. Nope. Well, there's an overhang now that will just be raised up, but it's not going to be increased any more than it already is. In fact, just to kind of drive that point home, to break up the facade um, that's there right now, the um, on the house, uh, Mr. Wilson had uh, actually put just a what do you call it, a force false little. What he said, uh, <laughs> purely aesthetic, and uh, it came out about what six or eight inches. And the DEP said, "That's a change. You know, you can do this if you want to submit for the whole permit." And we're like, "Well, time out. Forget it. Never yeah. mind." Um, and the uh, the owner is like, "Fine, whatever. It well, might have looked better, but the DEP says no. It's not a great idea. Then we're just not going to go there." Okay. Any letters on this one, Carol? No. No letters. Uh, it does seem to be straightforward. We appreciate that uh, there was no envelope change. So it does make our questioning much easier. So thank you. Actually, if I may just interject one more point just to kind of drive this home a little bit. You see the little uh, the, uh, the properties highlighted in the green, uh, that little orange rectangle that you see there? That's the building envelope. It's the what? That's the building <laughs> envelope. It's rather challenging. <laughs> this is also a corner anywhere? lot, so you get the idea of what we're up against. Pack of gum. <laughs> Are you like walking up and down Vesper Street at this point? Uh, we're going all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool, actually. Well, I, I, cool. I have no questions. I, I don't have I questions or comments either. It's as straightforward as anything we've seen. Let me open it up to public comment. Does anybody from the public like to wish to speak on this one? Seeing no one, we'll close the public portion of the meeting again. Go back to the board. Is again, there, oh, sorry. No, please. Is there? I'm looking at the picture online here. It looks like there's another house that could be, like, right next to this or across from this or a couple that look like they have the same type of configuration you're asking for. Is that? Mm -hmm. uh, on Vesper Street, it's just one up away from the water. Is I think that's what you're referring to. Must be because we're on the corner lot there. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at two houses that look like they have the same almost type of footprint as to mm -hmm. what you're proposing. Yes, they're very similar. I mean, I, I think you could have opened yourself up to uh, potential questions if you were going for a third story, but but you're not doing that. So well, they're pretty reasonable. It's the first story, right? It's it's a two-story living area. Um, and then there's the, the sort of garage basement kind of, I mean, so you can get a car in there, but right. you know, it's not like you would normally think of. Right. Yes. Right. There, there. There. Yes, please. Is there any living space from the first level now? No. Just a garage? That's correct. Right. And you're in the flood zone? Yes. Any utility down there or anything? Uh, there are some utilities, but they are elevated in the in the basement. Okay. And that's not the high erosion area. Uh, no, that is an erosion hazard area, uh, okay. the newly designated one, and which is why we actually uh, submitted that to the DEP initially. And what they had said was um, that because no permit was necessary based on the, uh, we, we were looking at actually cutting into the existing foundation um, for the flood hazard. Uh, and they said that uh, even though the DEP is not directly affiliated with FEMA, they still take a look at that. Um, and they had indicated that if we were going to be building from scratch, we'd have to do that. Um, but because we're not going, we're not doing anything with the foundation whatsoever, that is grandfathered and so that is non-jurisdictional. Good question. I'm glad we have that on record. It's a grandfather foundation. Again, questions or comments from the board? I like it. All right, why don't we go to the questions? Land in use, uh, the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless a variance is granted. 
Uh, true, the existing structure is only 784 square feet of living area. While minimally acceptable as a seasonal cottage, the Larue's intend to this to be their year-round home. Uh, originally intending to remodel the ground floor into a living area, they were informed that pursuant to DEP regulations placing the lot in the erosion hazard area, any reconstruction of the ground floor would not be allowed because the entire structure would need to be on piles, uh, which would also require a municipal hardship variance. Uh, we didn't need to go there anyway, but they indicated that um, just for our benefit. So by leaving the first floor intact, uh, they can, or the ground floor, they can only expand vertically, or we can only expand vertically in order to enjoy a seasonable return, a reasonable return for a four-season house. By approaching the project in this matter, no DEP permit is required. Thank you. Board? I'm good with that answer. That satisfies my curiosity. It's always the toughest one, but I, I think if you can't put living area down there and it's basically seasonal now and you're trying to do a four season, that would. Mr. Richard? No comment. I agree. I think it's in line. Need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not the general condition in the neighborhood. Correct. Uh, the lot on which the house sits is at 2,800, 2850 square feet, pretty small lot, uh, and the house is 784 square feet. Both were created prior to the enactment of zoning. Because of the lot size and location, which is a corner with two fronts and two sides, there is virtually no existing building foot uh, envelope, it should be. Uh, any expansion of external co uh, construction would thus require a variance, which means that that's why we're here, because even yeah. though we're just going up, we still need that variance up there. To the board. I think that pretty well covers it. The, the, the property the, is extremely unique with no building envelope at all, other than just a couple of feet. Uh, really nothing that you can do on there. I agree with that. I would agree. I'm in agreement as well. Agreed. The granting of the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. Correct. The, house, the lots and houses in the Higgins Beach area are constantly evolving uh, to enhance the overall character of the neighborhood of which they are a part. The proposed improvements to this house will make it considerably more conforming to overall neighborhood character. To the board. I would certainly have to agree with that. I think, uh, as we mentioned earlier, that this, this entire area has been changing, and I think this will bring it much more into conformance with what is going on around it. Well said, I agree. I would agree. Like I said, I looked it up online. It looks like a couple houses almost have very, very similar to what you're proposing. Mr. Richard? Yeah, huge improvement, no doubt. It looks nice. It really does. Thank you. I'm in agreement as well. Uh, photos from the previous application being in the same area. That numerous number of houses that uh, that are anywhere between one and two and a half stories and it fits right in the character with that. So I agree. Hardship is not the result of an action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. The hardship uh, is indeed the direct result of the enactment of various zoning restrictions that were created long after the lot was created and the original house was constructed. And to the board. Yeah, the age of the house, I have to agree completely. I agree as well. I would agree. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with this postage stamp uh, building envelope. It, it's not an issue by you. It is, uh, it's been there. So, looking to the board for, yeah, go ahead. I do have a question. Sure. Um, with these homes that we've actually looked at this evening, for the planning department, <laughs> it's going to create hazards or issues for you folks where they all seem to be pretty fairly close together if all construction is going to be happening at the same time. I'm not sure if that's going to be happening or not. You had mentioned you got numerous calls from neighbors when things were happening about houses shaking and stuff. And just, I'm just wondering, because they're all fairly close together. It, it was the driving of the piles. Okay. That was problematic. It, the houses building next to each other, that's that's not a problem. Okay. Uh, matter of fact, it makes visits a lot easier. Park the car and walk <laughs> all of them and stuff. Uh, so, so it's uh, uh, no, it, it it was it was particularly the driving of the piles into the uh, peat layer that was problematic. Um, it it really is. If you've seen the beach washed out, you've seen the peat. And uh, uh, so it's either ledge of peat down there and then just sand on top of it. And you don't see any problems as far as parking with numerous <laughs> construction trucks? Uh, 
No, because in the summertime, those guys have to comply with the parking requirements. Uh, the police will drive them off just as well as all the, Great. you know, surfers or swimmers or whoever comes, you know. So the police patrol is down there during the summer, and uh, in the wintertime, you know, it, everybody just jams in. That's all. It wasn't unique to this specific appeal. I'm just, I understand. in my mind, I'm just thinking, point. Yeah. what could we be doing to the planning department here? Yeah. Yep, this winter we had to ask uh, uh, one contractor that was working uh, on the big house on the corner of uh, Pearl Street, I think, or whatever it is, and, and Bayview, uh, to move some of their uh, uh, wood that they had stacked on top of the dump stuff uh, storage to turn it so it wasn't hanging out over the street so the plow truck wouldn't hit it. But, uh, <laughs> Great, thank you. Any other questions or comments or a motion from the board? Yes, move to, to approve 2417 as presented uh, with no amendments. I'll second that. And we did it without you prompting us. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't hear it. Second. I did. I heard it, but I didn't, couldn't tell who it was. Mr. <laughs> Dillon. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. And off the record, as it were, beyond the record, I just want to point out that uh, Mr. Wilson has done more projects than probably we've done down in that area, and he is amazing to be able to make these properties conform. So the compliments that you had about the house looks really good, and et cetera, goes where it's due. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and good luck. That was the last appeal for uh, this evening. Uh, I'm going to open up the floor to the board for any closing comments or statements. I've got one, if nobody else has one. Um, last meeting, I put in a request for everybody to uh, give us feedback as to whether you could come to the meeting, and I appreciate those that did. Um, uh, again, it's very important that we know who's going to be here so that we know whether we have a quorum or not, so I appreciate the feedback. So I do remind you, if you can, uh, we will put out a question to the to the board about a week in advance so we can know who's going to be there. Just respond back with an email so that we know. Thank you. And uh, to the general public, we are looking for additional people on the board. If there's anybody out in Scarborough that would be interested in becoming a member of the zoning board, we are looking for people, one or two. So you can put in an application and uh, become a zoning board member. It's so much fun. <laughs> the pay is great. Uh, the money is awesome. So we are all looking, always looking for people. Thank you. If there is nothing else from the board, move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Thank you very much. Have a great evening. <laughs>